Good morning and welcome to the first day of official press conferences for the 89th annual All-State Sugar Bowl. We, just, we ask that you please turn off all cell phones for our press conferences. Today's first press conference features Kansas State Defensive Coordinator Joe Klanderman. We will have 15 minutes of availability with Coach Klanderman and then we invite you to move next door to Napoleon A for access to the following Wildcat defensive players. Defensive end Felix and Udike Uzoma. Cornerback Julius Brent. Linebacker Daniel Green. Nose guard Eli Huggins. And linebacker Austin Moore. After Coach Klanerman makes a brief opening statement, we will open the floor to questions. Please wait for the microphone to ask your question and please identify yourself by your name and media outlet. Thank you. Coach Klanerman. I just want to thank everybody. Uh, thank the Sugar Bowl Committee for having us. This is just an unbelievable event with uh, so much tradition. I'm so proud to be a part of it. Um, you know, it's been so welcoming here. We're excited about the opportunity. Um, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure, find a way to put our best 60 minutes of football uh, on, on, on the grass or on the turf. Um, I think our guys are going to uh, lay it down for K-State and represent. Um, we're excited about the, the challenge that's upcoming. We're uh, thankful for the fans that are driving down, crawling down, however they can get down here, um, uh, trying to find a way to come and, and support us. And um, we're just ready to get this thing teed off. All right, questions? When you look at this Alabama offense, what goes through your head? I, I think probably the un, you know, people talk about the stars and, you know, they've certainly had their, their share of those over the years, but I think really up front, they're phenomenal. I think they're, uh, they're, they're strong, they're athletic, they move well, they work well, uh, they're cohesive. Um, I think that's kind of the, 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 the gel that, that gets this thing all going. And then when you couple that with playmakers around those guys, I think it makes them a real dangerous, uh, dangerous crew to stop. With Bryce Young opting in, so to speak, <laughs> does it make it uh, more of a known commodity as opposed to having someone else out there you, that might change the offense a little bit? Yeah, we were in flux there for a little while. Didn't, didn't really know. I, I think there's definitely two different styles of offense, uh, depending on who the trigger man is. And uh, uh, you certainly have a lot more uh, background with, with Bryce Young, uh, you know, going back a couple years of, of, uh, of offensive stuff. and kind of his, his cadence and rhythm, and, and uh, I think we do, absolutely, I think you're right on that. We, we do know a little bit more about uh, Bryce than we do uh, the others. Yeah, and finally, what, what exactly do they do that causes stress points for a defense? Um, I, I, I just think it's, it's we've certainly seen, seen um, more complicated schematics. You know, we've seen more tempo, we've seen more you know, it's not that. What makes it go is the execution. I think they play really hard. I think they've got uh, obviously a lot of a lot of talent and, and skill. I think they play a physical brand of football. Um, you know, that's that that's the hidden sauce is just the the, the toughness, the the physicality, and the execution and, and the grind, uh, play after play, and that's that's what makes them them unique. Scott Bridge from K State Athletics. Say, hey, Joe, I was curious. You have held every opponent underneath their scoring average this season. Why is that? <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't. I don't look at it uh, until I guess it's over. But um, you know, we're just trying to get out of each series. You know, honestly, that that's that's the mindset. We're not we're not trying to hold them under whatever thirty four whatever points per game there is that we're, we're just trying to trying to win each series win each play and and I think when you stack enough of those together um, that's that's the that's the magic and uh, we're um, you know just trying to find ways to continue to, to give different pictures and different looks on each snap so that we can we can um, have success on that snap and then when you put it together 60 minutes of that you end up with a good result Hey, Joe, Kellis Robinette here with the Wichita Eagles, Kansas City Star. Um, I know uh, bowl prep is always a fun time for you guys because you get to look ahead a little bit, develop some guys, get them an opportunity to play a little bit more in practice. Who are some guys who have stood out to you during that time leading up to this game? I, from a developmental standpoint, I'm, I'm going to say Toby Austin Sami has been uh, awesome. I think Jake Clifton continues to develop and, and uh, VJ Payne continues to develop and mature. I know those guys have played a little bit in games, but – you know, we've got some some really young players that we're extremely excited about uh, moving forward. You know, from an older guy perspective, um, 
you know, we're, we're still uh, pushing a lot of uh, kind of these intermediate guys that are going to be the guys uh, in the future, the Austin Moores and, uh, you know, the, the Nate Matlacks and those guys to, into more leadership positions. Um, you know, we're just trying to set the stage for what the spring and the winter is going to look like for those guys as they, you know, as the, as the Eli Huggins and some of those guys move on, you know, who's going who's gonna to fill that void of, of being the voice in the room? And uh, we're, we're trying to push that on those guys as much as we can during this time also. I just wanted to ask, is, is Echo up to full speed right now? Yeah, Echo practiced yesterday. Um, he practiced on uh, Monday also. Um, he seems to be uh, not showing any ill effects of anything. I think he's ready to go. Derek Young with the K State Online. Is it fair to assume uh, that you guys weren't expecting any opt outs either with you know guys that could have done it with Deuce and Felix? And is that a product of your culture? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, we, we never really considered it. And I don't think there was uh, any players that we had to have discussions with or that we were worried about. I think our guys are excited about representing K State and just want to go out there and play. And what kind of goes through your mind when you know some of these players, you're coaching them for the last time? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't hit me yet. I try not to think about it. I, I, it's going to be really emotional, um, you know, just having that final meeting, that final walkthrough, that final, you know, uh, pregame kind of hullabaloo that we go through. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a lot. Been through a lot with a lot of these guys. You know, think about the COVID year and think about, you know, shoot some of these guys. Eli Huggins was here w when we gate when we got here, and uh, um, you know, it, it's it's going to be certainly a different feel without those guys in the room. Michael Goins, GoPowerCat.com. Joe, can you describe briefly just the evolution of the 3-3-5 defense and the changes you've made and how that's come along in two seasons? Yeah, I mean, a year ago, we were just piecemealing things together as much as we could. There was a lot of week-to-week -week learning. There was a lot of things that, uh, and when I say that, there was a lot of week-to-week -week install for the players, uh, particularly on third downs, where I think we, we still were behind the curve. I think we did a lot of work in the off season um, to get, I guess, what I would call a package together, where we can, you know, we can name things, and uh, I think it's a lot different than what we were accustomed to. Um, in that, I think you can play a little bit more offensive football on defense. I think there's a lot of adjustments that we can make real subtly that don't affect a whole lot of people other than maybe one or two, uh, just with a simple tag or with a simple um, change in alignment, and. Um, so we got uh, to that stage, I think, a little bit over the over the off season, and I think throughout the year we haven't deviated much from from that. I mean, we we pretty much stayed true to that. So it's allowed us to be a little bit more, probably multiple, probably carry some more things week to week um, than what we typically would in the past. You know, back in the four down days, I don't know um, the the magic recipe, but we maybe carried uh, in a given week maybe three base defenses and three pressures in, in base down situations. Now we can carry nine things, you know, and, and uh, it just doesn't mind blow our guys because they're not that much different for them technically. And so we, we, we're just able to do a little bit more with it right now. And I think that's going to continue to evolve. I think there's things we're talking about on a daily basis now that are going to be different moving ahead. You know, boy, I wish we had that or, you know, and, and those are some things that we're going to start to explore in January and February moving ahead into spring ball. Arnie Green, Topeka Capital Journal, Slime Journal. Um, wanted to ask about, about Felix. His numbers may not necessarily reflect it, but how big an impact has he had this year just, yeah. I guess, from his, his presence and people having to... Yeah, he dictates so much attention. I know exactly where you're driving at. He, he's just, um, you know, we, we've seen teams that have, that have turned their protection to him when we've given no other looks. Um, you know, and, and he's made life a lot easier for a guy like Brendan Mott, who's had a tremendous year, um, in part because of himself, but also, you know, is a byproduct of, of, you know, the attention that Felix garners. Um, you know, Nate Matlack, Jalen Pickle, some of these guys are, uh, are really the beneficiaries of what Felix can do and how disruptive he can be. Um, you know, in terms of just, you know, there's another guy that just the growth uh, that he's you know, over two years where he was to where he is now is incredible. And, uh, you know, just maturity, not only, not only on the football field, but off. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of him and the journey that he's made so far. Also, Daniel Green obviously has had, had issues all year with with injuries and stuff. How Where is he now in his? He's full speed. He's, he's as good uh, as he's been. He probably feels, uh, probably wishes he had some of those weeks back. I mean, there was a, uh, shoot, there was, 
probably five or six weeks in there where he didn't he didn't really practice. Um, you know, we did as many walkthrough things with him, got him as many pictures as we could get him, but he was he was not practicing. He'd go out there and he'd limp around on Saturday, but his leadership and his presence was so important to us that uh, that we needed to do it that way. And uh, you know, he had a, a midseason uh, surgery and and is able to come back and um, did uh, you know it's been phenomenal since he's gotten better and better each week. Ted Lewis, New Orleans Times, speaking and coach. I want to go back to the conference championship game. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction on, by the defensive staff when you saw TCU going for it on fourth down? Well, I assumed that they would. Um, you know, I, you get to that. I, I knew that that was going to happen. I, I, they were dead. Nobody really stopped them. You know, and 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 uh, you know the the question for for them after the game, I'm sure, is why didn't you you know keep it in the quarterback's hands? Nobody really stopped their tailback either. You know, I, I don't blame the, the play call. I, I, I just uh, kind of knew what we were going to get, and, and uh, we buckled down. And it's, it's, it's amazing to put something that, of that magnitude on one, one play or one technique. That's just uh, phenomenal. But I didn't doubt for a second they would go for it. We have time for two more questions, please. Coach Cole Carmody, uh, GoPowerCat.com. When you go back and you look at who Alabama's played this season, specifically the teams and their defensive structure, not a lot of 3-3-5 three, three, in there. Is that kind of something that you guys take into account when you go through your game plan, or how much do you take away from other how other teams defend Alabama? Yeah, we, we obviously look at that the same way that their offense would look at, at things that uh, have hurt us. Um, you know, it, it, it makes it, uh, you know, it's good and bad to that. You know, the good is you know, they haven't probably – uh, spend a bunch of time working against that stuff. The bad is we we don't necessarily see how they attack those things. You know, we're looking for that stuff too. We're looking for, man, I'd, I wish we could see how they block this or I'd see how they protect this or, you know, what route structure do they like against this picture? Uh, where do they throw the ball in man versus zone? You know, uh, those are those are things that, that we're looking at that we sometimes have a hard time finding. You know, it's been the evolution of the Big 12. I, you know, for a while it was all three down while we were a four down team and then you know, we go to three down, think we're going to get more pictures, and everybody else goes to four down. And it just kind of, uh, you know, it's the revolving door. So we got a little bit of anticipation and, and uh, guesswork that we're putting into that right now. Hey, Joe. Tim Everson, Manhattan Mercury. Um, you guys came into the season with a lot of uh, a lot of spaces to fill in the secondary. You get Drake, Kobe, Josh, and the freshmen to come in. They all make a huge impact. Looking back on that process now, how how pleased are you with, with with how that process kind of turned out and yeah. the meshing of all that? You know, it's a couple of years in a row now where where we've had to do that. You know, a year ago with Reggie Stubblefield and Russ Yeast, and you know this year with all the players that you mentioned, and you know the the surprising one in that that probably it, it, none of them surprised me because they're all just tremendous competitors and they will work and do whatever you need to do to get to, um, to get the job done. V.J. Payne, what he's done as a true freshman is is sensational. I think he's been, um, you know, fitting right along with the, with that group. And I, I think the fact that he's with uh, Kobe and with Josh and with Sincere Mason and with Drake and those older guys, he's kind of seeing how they operate and how you need to, to, to operate to play at an elite level. And I'm, I'm so thankful that those young guys got to spend time with those guys, even even if it was brief. All right, thanks, Coach. And once again, Wildcat defensive players are now available next door in Napoleon A. Thank you, guys.